Bitcoin and a wallet all in one. So you, this is a wallet containing exactly one Bitcoin. If you purchase the uh, coin, you can just by entering the private key into your Bitcoin wallet, you'll be able to transfer the money off of this coin to anywhere on the internet you so desire. So in essence, this is as close to a physical representation of a Bitcoin as possible. And these are quite popular. Um, not many of them have been minted and people do love buying them. And you can see this is just one Bitcoin. And even though the market price right now is $70, uh, give or take, it's already in market for $202. To give you an idea, some of these, $405 for 2011, uh, $500 for another coin. So the people really do like these guys. It's uh, it's kind of a cool, <laughs> interesting concept. They collect physical bitcoins. So that uh, that's option A. You can buy them. Option B is you can barter for them. There's a couple of websites that do exist, which will be included in the appendix, uh, for people who have bitcoins to hang out and do things. And uh, you can just chat with them and say, hey, I'd like to get some Bitcoins, even 0 0.0001 of them. Uh, can I do something for a Bitcoin? And they'll say, oh, yeah, of course you can. You know, something like that. So option B, just like anything else, you can barter. And option C, just like real life, you have a job, you go work at Walmart or you go be a doctor or an engineer, whatever you are. Uh, you can perform services to acquire Bitcoins because you're performing services to acquire dollars or you can sell goods. In fact, if you're a merchant who runs a website, you can actually accept Bitcoins as payment using a website called BitPay. BitPay is really wonderful. Uh, they've received funding from a venture capital firm. Uh, the one I, right now escapes me, but they're the de facto provider of merchant services for people who wish to accept Bitcoin. Very low exchange rates, very easy to integrate, and I think they even do real-time cash conversions where people can pay you in Bitcoins and then they'll just uh, convert it into whatever the dollar amount of the Bitcoin is at the time and give it to you if you so desire. So those are really the three ways that you can fill your wallet. Remember, Bitcoins are real money and people trade real money for them, so you're not going to get them for free. You have to do something for them. And there are three options. You can either buy them, you can barter for them, or you can perform services or sell goods for them, just like real life with real money, like the US dollar. Okay, so now that you know what a Bitcoin wallet is, and now that you know how to get Bitcoins, how do you move money from one wallet to another wallet? So I'm going to do that myself with my own wallet. So here is my wallet online. And this is my address for my wallet online. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer money. I'm going to copy my address right here and make sure you get the address right. And I'm going to open my wallet I have right here. I guess I must have closed it, so I'll open it up again. Oh wait, I guess it's right here. There we go. It says loading wallet. It just takes a second to boot up. Verifying block database integrity. All these cool terms that you don't need to know. Kind of the magic of computers. And it says out of sync. It's going to take a moment to sync up. Two blocks remaining. One block remaining, and there we go. We are synced with the network. Okay, so I'm going to send coins, and it says pay to. I enter in the address, and it says overview right here. I have 0 0.01 bitcoins, so let's send all my bitcoins. To self, and that's just to remind me that I've sent bitcoins to myself. So I'll click send, and it says, are you sure you want to do this? Remember something, well, when you send bitcoins to an address, it is irreversible. You can't go ahead and click a button to get your money back. It's like handing a $20 bill to somebody unless they give it back to you. It's theirs. Ah, okay. There's a small transaction fee for sending, which is 0 0.005, so I'll just send that much. There we go. Yes. And you'll hear a little beep sound. Beep. All right. Then you're going to see my transactions. And then all of a sudden, right here, instantly, my Bitcoin wallet, living on a server thousands of miles from where I live, it just recognized, hey, somebody sent you something. And within 
a very small period of time, within 10 minutes to 15 minutes, this money is going to go ahead and be available to me. And that's kind of the magic of Bitcoins. Uh, this is something where with credit cards online, you can have chargebacks up to three months later. With PayPal, you can have three to five days when you're transferring money between PayPal and a bank account. Any movement of money, for the most part online, does take some time, hours at the minimum, usually days, a couple of business processing days. The Bitcoin, within 60 minutes, there's an astronomically low probability that that's a bad transaction, meaning that within 60 minutes, your money is guaranteed to be there. Usually within one block transaction, one confirmation, uh, your money is good to go. So that's 10 minutes, the maximum amount of time it takes to move money from one block to the next block. Now. This transaction may have been from myself to myself, but the Bitcoin network has no way of knowing that. In fact, this wallet address right here is not connected to my identity in any way, shape, or form. If I didn't tell you that that was my wallet address, there would be no way for you to backward engineer that to me. This is where the anonymity of the system comes from. You don't need to know the person's identity to be able to receive money or to send money to them. There's no name attached to any of the transactions. And that's why the Bitcoin has so much utilities. There's an anonymous transaction system built into the very design. Okay, so that's how you send money. And you can see my balance in my wallet now. Number of transactions, okay. Another thing to remember, again, I'm going to say it, and I'll say it again, is that transactions are not reversible, okay? There is no way once you have sent a Bitcoin from one address to another address, unless the other person you've sent it to consents to get your money back. So buyer beware, be very careful about your transactions and when you send money to whom you send it to. Another thing is that it's very possible to send Bitcoins to the wrong address. So that crazy number that I had there. Let me open this up. If I even change something like this R, for example, to a G, the Bitcoin network would allow me to do that. I would be allowed to send that, even though there might not be a physical human being attached to that dress. There, there, that may not exist. The Bitcoin network has no way of knowing if this key within reason is actually connected to a person, to a wallet. So if you have a typo inside the uh, inside the wallet address, it's very, very easy to, um, to send money to the wrong person, or in some cases to send money off into oblivion, much less like throwing your $20 bill into the garbage. This is why it's really highly recommended that you copy and paste Bitcoin addresses, or you use something like a QR code to send Bitcoins, or you use a cloud-based wallet and you use a service like BitPay to purchase things because it takes care of these addresses for you. you don't, you'll don't. you never have to type them. The only time you should ever type something up is when you're writing down your private key on a piece of paper or something like that as a backup solution. So it's very, it's very important to remember that. Okay, so now some security advice. The first thing I'd say is treat your Bitcoin wallet as you would your bank account. So it's perfectly fine and it's perfectly okay to share your public address with everybody. I did just in this lecture. And if anybody wants to send me Bitcoins, I would really appreciate it. That's nice, That's, uh, tips are appreciated. That said, a private key is kind of like your bank password. Don't share it with anyone, okay? Generally speaking, you don't even know your private key. Like for example, I never had to enter my private key to turn on my wallet. It's actually built on into here. And to back it up, if I, uh, I click on file, I can back up my wallet like this and save it as something like backup. And there we go. I can actually load the, my private key from that backup anywhere and I can even put that back up on a uh, I can put that back up excuse me I can put that back up on a flash drive I can email it to myself and so forth so be careful about who you share your private key with you can actually encrypt your wallet if you have the knowledge of how to do that it's uh, it's highly recommended because it's uh, it's like putting a, your money into a vault uh, using Bitcoin QT you click encrypt wallet and there's an entire process that you have. And so if you have a shared computer or you, you're not really, if you're, it's on a laptop or something, you, you, you have a potential of losing your laptop, probably a good idea to encrypt your wallet. That said, um, if you lose your laptop, there is no way of recovering your wallet outside of a being, having it backed up. 
so you'll lose the money inside the wallet. I guess the, the solace is that the person who steals your laptop won't have access to the money though. Um, but if you do back up the wallet, then you can absolutely rebuild the wallet somewhere else just by importing it. Oops, let me, there we go. And I recommend again to back up your wallet in two separate places. So I'd recommend uh, putting that .dat on a flash drive and probably emailing it to yourself. This is if you choose to use a desktop based wallet. If you go for a wallet online, like uh, blockchain, for example, the wallet service that I use, uh, it's automatically backed up. And as long as blockchain is in business, uh, you can go ahead and use your wallet. The import and export options, just a moment. The import and export options actually allow you to go ahead and recover your wallet from their server as well. So let's say for the sake of the argument, blockchain goes out of business, you'll still have access to your wallet. You can import it, you can export it, you can encrypt it, you can do all these things. And if you need any help at all with that, they actually have a service number you can call them and they'll uh, they'll let you know everything you need completely free. And this service using blockchain is completely free as well. They're a very good company. So. There we go. So I'd recommend backing up your wallet regardless if it's in the cloud or if it's on a desktop. But that said, if it's on a cloud, it's probably very safe. One thing to understand, if you're going to use a cloud-based wallet, it's just like having a bank account. That means that the person you create your wallet with understands something about you. They know your identity. They know you're associated with that address, so you've kind of given up anonymity for convenience. And also, um, they may have an ability to prevent you from using your wallet if you don't have uh, the private key for it. So just be careful about that. Blockchain is kind of nice because your wallet is encrypted on their server, and your main password is something that you use to decrypt the wallet, and blockchain never is involved in that process. As a result, they actually have no access to your wallet whatsoever. Other cloud-based solutions, that's not necessarily true. So just be careful and be advised about that. Okay, so to recap, we discussed the Bitcoin wallet. It's the bucket upon which you put your money in. There's a public key, a private key. The public key is your address where people send money to. The only way that people can access that money is by using a private key. A lot of this is usually taken care of for you by a Bitcoin wallet client like Bitcoin QT. Go to bitcoin.org to go ahead and uh, read more about wallets and to download a free wallet, or you can go to blockchain.info to um, create a cloud-based wallet. We covered how to transfer money from one wallet to the next. You need to have the address of the wallet you want to send the money to. Make sure you get that right because uh, even a small typo can send money off into oblivion or to the wrong person. Um, once you have that address, you just click the send button and your money is going to be uh, at that person's, in that person's wallet and confirmed in less than one hour, six confirmation windows. Um, in terms of security advice, I'd highly recommend that you treat your wallet like you would a real life wallet or a bank account. Don't let people have certain private pieces of information. For example, don't let people have access to a computer that has your Bitcoin wallet on it unless your wallet is encrypted. And also, it's a good idea to back up your wallet because if your hard drive crashes, unless you have that private key, you won't be able to access your money or else there wouldn't be any security in the Bitcoin system. And if you use a cloud-based wallet, absolutely make sure that you trust that cloud-based solution uh, and if they're storing it on their server, preferably you have some way of retrieving that private key and using it for your own purposes. Uh, finally, to acquire Bitcoins, just like acquiring real money, you have to do something. Either you have to exchange a different type of money for Bitcoins, and you do that on Mt. Gox or some other exchange. And we're going to have a whole lecture actually on uh, Bitcoin speculation. We're going to talk about Mt. Gox in much greater detail. Uh, or you have to barter or trade goods and services for a Bitcoin, just like real money. So that's all I have for you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email me or to go ahead and comment on this lecture. And until next time, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.